वेलकम टू इंडियन रेलवे ब्रिज मैनुअल चैप्टर नंबर थ्री इन्वेस्टिगेशन एंड सर्वे फॉर कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द ब्रिजेस इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सम इम्पोर्टेंट क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड टू दिस चैप्टर व्हिच विल हेल्प यू टू अंडरस्टैंड द चैप्टर एंड विल हेल्प यू टू क्रैक द एग्जाम्स सो द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज इन द इन्वेस्टिगेशन फॉर द माइनर ब्रिजेस वेन अस्क्यू क्रॉसिंग इज अनबल वॉट इज द रिकमेंडेड मैक्सिम अस्क्यू एंगल यानी कि छोटे पुलों के जांच में जब तिरछा क्रॉसिंग अपरिहार्य हो जाता है तो उस परिस्थिति में अनुशंसित अधिकतम जो तिरछा कोण होगा वो कितने डिग्री तक का हो सकता है एंड डेट इज थर्टी डिग्री कम टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन विच अ स्टेज ऑफ ब्रिज इन्वेस्टिगेशन इन्वॉल्व द फाइनल लोकेशन सर्वे एंड प्रिपरेशन ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट रिपोर्ट पुल जांच के किस चरण में अंतिम स्थान सर्वेक्षण और परियोजना रिपोर्ट तैयार करना शामिल होता है एंड इट इज ऑप्शन सी डिटेल्ड सर्वे एंड प्रोजेक्ट रिपोर्ट स्टेज क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री द रिकोनेंस स्टेज ऑफ ब्रिज इन्वेस्टिगेशन प्राइमरली इंक्लूड्स द ऑप्शन इज गिवेन हियर सो यू कैन read the question and find out the answer the reconnaissance stage of the bridge investigation primarily it is the study of map site visits and aerial reconnaissance so here option b is the right answer question number 4 for estimating the approximate water bay in the techno economic feasibility study which method is suggested The suggestions are uh, given here: Manning formula, rational formula, regional flood frequency approaches, and unit hydrograph method. So here, uh, right answer is regional flood frequency approaches. Question number five: In rivers with meandering courses or tortuous flows, investigation for the bridge construction should be carried out for. here options are only the most convenient site every available alternate site only the upper stream site only the down stream site so here answer is every available alternate site next question is at which stage are only preliminary drawing and estimate required for the report the option is given below you can find out and the right answer is techno economic feasibility study so option b is the right answer question number 7 while surveying a river for the location of an important bridge the river should be surveyed for what distance upper stream and down stream measured at right angle to the center to the railway center line सो so, यहां आपको बताना है कि यदि एक महत्वपूर्ण पुल के स्थान के लिए नदी के सर्वेक्षण करते समय नदी के प्रवाह और प्रवाह के बीच की दूरी का सर्वेक्षण किया जाना है तो जो कि रेलवे लाइन के संपूर्ण पर मापा गया है तो वो कितनी दूरी तक मापा जाएगा तो यहां पर मापा जाएगा आठ किलोमीटर अप स्ट्रीम में और दो किलोमीटर डाउन स्ट्रीम में क्वेश्चन नंबर एट वाइल्ड सर्वेइंग अ रिवर फॉर द लोकेशन ऑफ एन इंपॉर्टेंट ब्रिजेस The distance of eight kilometer upstream and two kilometer downstream for the river surveying should be measured at. वैसे तो इस सवाल का जवाब पिछले सवाल में आ चुका है. इसका जवाब है कि at the right angle to the center line of the railway. While surveying a river for the location of an important bridge, the average slope of the river bed should be determined between which two points. किसी महत्वपूर्ण पुल के स्थान के लिए नदी का सर्वेक्षण करते समय नदी तल के औसत ढलान किन दोनों बिंदुओं के बीच में निर्धारित की जानी चाहिए तो यहां पर होता है कि टू किलोमीटर अपर स्ट्रीम एंड टू किलोमीटर डाउन स्ट्रीम ऑफ द क्रॉसिंग क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन Design discharge for the water bay of a bridge is estimated using 
किसी पुल के जल मार्ग के लिए जो डिजाइन डिस्चार्ज का अनुमान लगाया जाता है वो इनमें से किसका उपयोग करके लगाया जाता है डेट इज एक्चुअल हाइड्रोमेट्रोलॉजिकल ऑब्जर्वेशन एंड कंप्यूटेड फ्लड डेटा द कंप्यूटेड फ्लड फॉर एस्टिमेटिंग डिजाइन डिस्चार्ज टिपिकली यूजेज री अकरेंस इंटरवल ऑफ एंड हियर इट शुड बी फिफ्टी ईयर्स हु हैज द अथॉरिटी टू मॉडिफाई द री अकरेंस इंटरवल बेस्ड ऑन द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ द रेलवे लाइन एंड द पर्सन इज चीफ ब्रिज इंजीनियर दैट इज ऑप्शन बी चीफ ब्रिज इंजीनियर फॉर अ कैचमेंट एरिया अप टू फाइव हंड्रेड स्क्वायर किलोमीटर द डिजाइन डिस्चार्ज That is Q should be increased by. So after calculating, it is increased by thirty percent. Question number fourteen: For a catchment area more than five hundred square kilometer, sorry, five hundred square kilometer, and up to five thousand square kilometer, the percentage increase in the design discharge should be, and it should be thirty to twenty percent. But it is decreasing with the area in increase. If the catchment area is more than five thousand square kilometer and up to twenty five thousand square kilometer, the increase in the design discharge should be, and it should be twenty to ten percent, but decreasing with increase in area. For a catchment area more than twenty five thousand kilometer, the percentage increase in the design discharge. So here, percentage increase in the in the design discharge that is less than ten percent. And uh, at the discretion of the chief bridge engineer. What is the minimum clear span required in new bridge and rebuilding of bridge on the existing area? So here the minimum clean span required for the new bridges or rebuilding for the bridges on the existing area, and that it should be one meter. What is the headroom that should be provided in the new bridges for the inspection and maintenance? The headroom should be one point two meter. Who has the authority to permit relaxation in minimum headroom provision? And the authority is principal chief engineer or chief bridge engineer. Relaxation in minimum headroom may be allowed in which of the following cases? And here the cases uh, when one point two meter headroom leads to heavy expenditure or construction difficulty. For a discharge of zero to thirty cumex, the minimum vertical clearance from the water level should be, and it should be six hundred millimeter. For a design discharge between the thirty one to three hundred cumex, what is the vertical clearance requirement? And it is six hundred to twelve hundred meter on the pro rata basis. And so here, option C is the right answer. For Uh, discharge ranging from three hundred one to three thousand cumex. What vertical clearance is required? And it is required fifteen hundred millimeter. For discharge above three thousand cumex, the vertical clearance shall be. जब तीन हजार cumex से ऊपर के discharge के लिए जो vertical clearance होगा वो होगा अठारह सौ millimeter. That is option B. For arc bridges with a span of less than four meter, what is the minimum clearance measured to the crown of entrados of the arc? यानि कि चार मीटर से कम के अब जी वाले arc bridges के लिए जो entrados के सेस पर न्यूनतम निकासी मापी जाती है, वो कितनी होती है? वो होती है rise और twelve hundred millimeter, whichever is more. For arc bridges with a span between four meter to seven meter, what is the minimum clearance measured to the crown of the entrance of the arc? And it is two third or fifteen hundred millimeter, which is average more. For arc bridges with a span between seven point one meter to twenty meter. What is the minimum clearance measured to the crown of the entrance of the arc, and that is two third or eighteen hundred millimeter, whichever is more.
For arc bridges with a span above 20 meter, what is the minimum clearance measured to the crown of the introduce of the arc? And here, two thirds rights. Siphons, pipe, and box culvert are designed as pressure conduits. What is the clearance required for this structure? So here, no clearance are considered necessary for the this structure. So option B is the right answer. When rebuilding bridges on the existing lines or building new bridges, the clearance can be relaxed under circum certain uh, conditions. Which of the following condition must meet for the clearance to be reduced? <coughs> and here, heavy expenditure and or serious difficulties in construction and the clearance can be safely reduced from the stipulated values. For discharge less than 3 QMX, what is the reduced clearance allowed for the bridge? जब यहां पर रिड्यूस्ड क्लीयरेंस की बात की जा रही है दैट इज 300 मिलीमीटर फॉर डिस्चार्ज बिटवीन 3 टू 30 क्यूमेक्स व्हाट इज द रिड्यूस क्लीयरेंस अलाउड इन द ब्रिजेस एंड दैट इज 300 टू 400 मिलीमीटर ऑन द प्रोरेटा बेसिस तो ऑप्शन बी फॉर डिस्चार्ज बिटवीन 31 टू 3000 क्यूमेक्स व्हाट इज द रिड्यूस क्लीयरेंस इन मिलीमीटर अलाउड फॉर द ब्रिजेस and that is 400 to 1200 millimeter on the pro rata basis. Under a special circumstances, the free board may be reduced only if basis prasthi yutiyo mein jo free board rata hai, usko kam kiya ja sakta hai. Yaha par dhyan rakhenge jo hindi kiya gaya hai, bo computerized kiya hua hai, system ke dora kiya gaya hai, to un mein translation mein thora ko fark dekhne ko mil sakta hai. So here, heavy expenditure and or serious construction difficulty exist and safe measurements are taken. What is the minimum free board allowed for the discharge less than 3 QMX under a special uh, relaxation? If uh, 3 QMX is less than discharge, then the minimum free board is 600 mm. What is the minimum free board allowed for discharge between 3 to 30 QMX under a special relaxation? And it is 750 millimeter. For discharge more than 30 QMX, can the free board be reduced under any circumstances? And it is the option is no, relaxation is not permissive. In which of the following cases can the existing free board be retained? And uh, reading the options. You can find here regirdering or a strengthening of existing bridge components. So this is the right answer. When can the provision of free board be waived for the siphons bridges? And it is waived when a, a spillway is provided upper stream with an outlet drain. Which of the following is not typically used as a foundation type of the railway bridges? And that is raft foundation. When is it generally considered most economical to choose a bridge a span length? And that is when the cost of a substructure including foundation equals to the cost of the superstructure. Open foundation are most suitable when? Open foundation curve sarvadik upyukt hota hai. And it is when uh, rock or film, uh, rock or firm subsoil is available at a uh, shadow depth with a little uh, score and flow. When are file foundation considered economical? File foundation kab uh, economical mana jata hai? When foundation must be very deep through soil with little a score. Why are larger diameter piles sometimes uh, preferred in the bridge foundation? The reason behind is that they can handle uh, large horizontal forces and reach depth beyond pneumatic uh, operation limit. What is a key advantage of well foundation for the railway bridges? 
the key advantage uh, of bell foundation for the railway bridges and the right option is high bearing capacity and suitability of a heavy square condition so your option c is the right answer who approves the GAD for the railway bridges on new lines, doubling or gauge conversions where linear waterway is reduced or vertical clearance is inadequate? In this case, the person is CBE of the concerned zonal railway. GAD, fee, GAD of all other railway bridges, that is where waterway or clearance is not involved of new lines doubling or gauge conversion are approved by here chief engineer construction GAD for all railway bridges on open line require approval from so here uh, except from the above here chief bridge engineer of the zonal railway GAD and launching a scheme of ROB, RUB, FOB or rail flyovers affecting existing lines must be approved by and it must be approved by the chief bridge engineer of the zonal railway after divisional and drm clearance who carries out the structural design and drawing work for bridge works executed by open line organization and here from the given option Bridge branch at headquarter level of the concerned zonal railway. Who carries out the approves? Who carries out and approves the structural design and drawing for bridge works executed by the construction organization? Simply, it is construction. Uh, answer is already given in the option. So here, construction organization. Who approves the GAD for the railway bridge on the DFC line where linear water bay is being reduced or vertical clearance is inadequate? So here, Chief Bridge Engineer of the Concern Zonal Railway. Option C is the right answer. GAD of all other bridges on the DFC line which don't involve reduction of the waterway or inadequate vertical clearance are approved by. And it is approved by the officer nominated by the CBE by the DFCC IL. Who approves the GAD and launching a scheme for all ROB, RUB, FOB, and rail flyover on the DFC line? And that is Chief Bridge Engineer of the Concern Zonal Railway. The structural design and drawing work for the bridge on DFC line shall be prepared and approved by you. So here it will be approved by the officer nominated by the CB by DFCCIL. And the last question from this chapter, in the case of rail flyovers on DFC lines, what is the mandatory in the design approval process? That is the mandatory is key proof checking of design should be from the IIT. So we have completed 56 question from this chapter. I assure you this question will help you to crack uh, questions which uh, may be asked in your upcoming examination. Either it may be the bridge, J bridge, SSC bridge or ANS exams. Thank you for watching this video. We will meet you in the next video on other topic. Thank you.